Well, good morning, and welcome to Peace Fabulous Online. We're glad that you're with us today. We've got a few announcements we'd like to share with you. First of all, all events and services at Peace Fabulous have been canceled through April 30th. That means um, we'll be doing services online on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. with Fred Dobbin, if you'd like to get your Sunday school on. 10 a.m. we have uh, our regular worship and Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock and we've been having a wonderful series with uh, Cameron McGill on the armor of God. Um, the Wyoming mission trip has been canceled along with the Boston Up fundraiser. If you bought any tickets, um, they will refund the money to you. Just call Carol in the main office and she'll give you information about that. The Annie Armstrong Easter offering is due by next Sunday. You can mail your check to the church office or you can give online. And if you give online, put in that little um, <clears throat> line, put Easter or Annie Armstrong so Carol will know what your donation is for. And since the egg hunt has been canceled, June has decided to do a virtual egg hunt. If you're curious and want to participate, uh, it's going out to everyone on Wednesday, this Wednesday, on your remind um, uh, text message. If you are not on the children's ministry remind, please get up with June prior to Wednesday. And if you need informa more information about that, Carol is always happy to answer your questions in the church office. And you can continue to mail your tithes online. Um, even though we're not actually coming in to the actual building, it's still important for us to be obedient and still pay our tithes. And you can also give online through the church app. And if you need anything, if you know anybody who has a, a need in the community, please reach out to Carol in the church office and she'll give that information to the appropriate people. And continue to check the church app. It's updated daily. And don't forget that Stephen's sermon notes are on there. And also there's a daily devotional that's on there. I went on there and, and found it quite helpful. And are there any other announcements? Okay. I want to share something with you before we pray. Um, Carol had um, so Carol had written up here for C CR the other night, and I think it fits this morning perfectly well. Uh, Philippians 4 tells us, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. And He's done a lot for His church. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And I also want to remind you to share this uh, sermon because there are folks uh, who see it and maybe they, they watch it and, and uh, maybe you're planting a seed in their life. So let's, let's bow our heads and pray real quick. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here today. I want to thank you that even though our world is in chaos, you're still in control. Father, you've never lost control, and we know that. You have us firmly in your hands. There are people today, Father, who are grieving, grieving the loss of loved ones, grieving the loss of their jobs. They're, they're scared. Father, help us to have our faith over fear. That's just the enemy telling us that we have nothing to be hopeful about. But, Lord, I have my hope in you. And, Father, I just want people around the world to find hope in you. In Jesus Christ, in the, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, thank you so much for taking care of us. Thank you for allowing us to be here. And thank you for allowing us to still be able to worship. And I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now, we'll turn it over to the praise team. Thank you. 
want to say good morning to you all. I pray that um, God has been speaking to you throughout this week. Uh, you ever have those moments in your lives where you know uh, God is present? Um, I had one of those moments this morning. Um, now, I don't have those every morning, and I'm sure most of you don't. But this morning, it's like God just showed me that he's with me, um, that he's here, um, present in the midst of the uncertainty, in the midst of all the chaos. Um, our God is forever present. And one way I find that God does this, you'll read something, and then shortly after that, he'll confirm what you're reading in his word. And throughout my morning, uh, God's really been teaching me uh, afresh again <clears throat> that he is with me forever. That he knows where I'm at. He knows everything about my life. He knows all the details of my life. And that's been the theme this morning ever since I woke up. And uh, in one devotion, it was about God being with me. The songs this morning has been about God is with us in the midst of all the chaos, in the midst of all the uncertainty. So I, I just pray uh, that God would show you that he's here that he's with you, that he's not going to forsake you. And trust me, we're still human. So there's times in our lives, there's periods in our lives where we really don't see the presence of God. But he's still there even when you don't see his presence. And then I've learned afresh this morning, God will give you a glimpse of his presence. So hold on to those times that uh, God does that for you. And my prayer for all of you at peace, that God in the near future would just give you a strong sense of his presence uh, because we need that. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start our new series this morning called Refocus the Cross. Um, and I pray that this will be an exciting series for us. Um, we, we definitely need to refocus on the reason why we exist. We exist as a church because Jesus laid down his life. And I really want us, uh, this is going to be a systematic study, which means it's not going to, we're not going to go through a book right now. The next book we will go through is Jonah in the next month or so. Uh, this is going to be a systematic study, meaning this. Hopefully you're going to learn your Bible as we go through this study. Because I'm going to take you to different places in the scriptures to just prove this point. Listen to this. The cross is God's eternal plan of salvation. I'm going to show you in this study that before God created this world, the cross was in his mind for this world. And I think we really need to refocus on the cross because we get so distracted. We get so off balance in our journey with the Lord that we, even, we, we just forget why we exist as a church. You forget why God has redeemed you. And hopefully in this study, your mind is going to get refocused on the cross. So if you will, type the cross. And if you're in here, say the, the cross. cross. So I'm going to read some verses in Isaiah 53. If you will, turn your Bibles to Isaiah 53. And when you're there, say word. Isaiah 53. Word. Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Listen to this, verse 3. He is despised and rejected. This is talking about Jesus here. By men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. In other words, when the Messiah comes, Isaiah says, he's not going to be this godly figure that everybody wants to worship. Instead, he's going to be a human being. And will be rejected. Isaiah writes this hundreds of years before Christ comes to this earth. But continue to read with me. Verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. 
But he was wounded for our transgressions, not his. Christ is sinless. We are sinful. And he was rejected and beaten and smitten and stricken for us. He was wounded for us. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone, sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Church, let's pray together. Father, help us to refocus on the cross. I pray for brothers and sisters that have gotten distracted, including myself. Help us to return back while we exist. Father, your plan for this creation is Jesus the Messiah, to suffer and to die for our sins. So, Father, help us, refresh us through this study. In Christ's name, amen. amen. So, real quick, I want to give you two types of distractions. This isn't in your notes. Uh, we'll try to get these in your notes uh, sometime this week. But listen, here's two, uh, two types of distractions that I've seen in my own personal life and in the lives of my brothers and sisters in the faith since I've been a believer for eight years. The first one is this: We get so distracted by the sins of those around uh, of those around us that we lose our excitement about the cross. Let me say that again: We get so consumed with the sinful lifestyles of people all around us that we lose our awe and our excitement about the cross. Right? We get so distracted. What was it? So-called brother and sister, sinning, living in sin, and it consumes your life, and then ultimately it consumes you, and you're not effective for the kingdom. You need to refocus on the cross. Amen. Listen to this. They call themselves Christians, but have no obedient lifestyle to the Lord, and that distracts us, doesn't it? And it should. I'll get to that series. Y'all just stay put. But listen, when we get so called up with so-called Christians living in sin and it consumes us, we will lose our excitement for King Jesus. Second distraction, we get so focused on our transformation that we never focus on the cross but ourselves. Right? You want to be transformed, you want God to change you, but listen, that's a good thing to have. But if you take your eyes off the cross, your faith becomes all about you and your transformation. And I'll just say this, if you're so focused on your transformation and you lose sight of the cross, you will drain yourself. Because listen, anybody can be transformed. Just think about it. Anybody can change a moral habit. If you make your Christianity all about morality and transforming your morality and you take your eyes off the cross, you're just a typical human being. Our transformation is based on the cross. What Jesus has done for us. Amen. Some of you are trained because you're consumed with your transformation rather than the cross. Should you be focused on transformation? Absolutely. But don't take your eyes off the cross like most of us have done. Word. So, listen to this. As we reflect upon Jesus Christ and his work to grant us salvation, the cross. I want us to have John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18 in our minds. Listen to what Jesus says in these verses. John chapter 10, verses 17 and 18. Listen to what Jesus says. Therefore, my Father loves me because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one, everyone type no one. Everyone say no. No. One. one. No one takes it from me. But I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, talking about his life, Jesus, and I have power to take it up again. This command I receive from my Father. Listen to this. In these two verses, Jesus is proclaiming complete sovereignty over his sufferings. In other words, listen to this. Jesus is in control of his sufferings and he is in control of his death. He is saying no human person is in control of the cross. They think they are, 
But in reality, the Father in heaven and myself and the Holy Spirit, we're in control of the cross. Amen. <laughs> Listen to this. The scribes, chief priests, elders, and other spiritual leaders think they are getting rid of a crazy man. Little do they know that Jesus Christ has given them his life for our sake. Amen. Listen to this. Jesus' plan of giving his life and suffering and death existed before the spiritual leaders thought they created the plan to kill Jesus. Just think about that. They thought they drew up this plan. But God throws them a haymaker, and in reality, God drew up this plan. See, the scribes think they're winning. Little do they know God is winning. Amen? And church, listen, we have to refocus. Jesus is winning, even in the uncertainty. Think about the culture. God's people are being cast out. God's people barely have the resources to live. And God is showing them, listen, I haven't forsaken you. I'm in complete control. But to the world's eyes, it doesn't look like Jesus is in control. It looks like the so-called spiritual leaders, governmental leaders are in control. But God's in control. So listen, I want to give you three truths this morning. The first one, as I take a sip of water, is this. Peter's confession. So think about that. Peter's confession. Real quick, I want you all to turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. 1 Peter Chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. And when you're there, say word, word. or type word. 1 Peter, chapter 1. Listen to this. 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. He indeed, talking about Jesus, was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Listen to this. The plan of Christ's sufferings preexisted the creation of the world. Just think about that. The plan of Christ's suffering, the plan of the cross, preexisted before God said, let there be light. Amen. Let there be humans made in my image. This plan consisted in the mind of God before the creation of the world. In other words, it isn't the plan of the scribes, the chief priests, the governor, Pilate. It is the plan of God himself for Christ to suffer and to go to the cross for our sins. You say, well, why do you tell us that? Because you need to know that the cross is all God's plan. Amen. The sufferings of Christ, the death of Christ, and the resurrection of Christ is the plan of God. You say, well, Stephen, we know that, but do you? Have you gotten so distracted that you've lost sight that this is God's pre-existed plan that we have neglected? This is the plan that should dominate the life of any individual Christian and any local church. Brothers and sisters, it's time to get the distractions out the way and get back focused on the predetermined plan of God for the Son of God to suffer on our behalf. Amen. Amen. We've gotten so off track, and Peter's trying to encourage us in Peter chapter 1, verses 20 and 21 to get your mind on the plan of God. And if you go study the context of 1 Peter, it's dealing with suffering Christians. Imagine that. Because suffering has a way of getting us distracted. Amen? Amen? Suffering has a way of getting us distracted. And what Peter does in his pastoral role is he points them back to the predetermined plan of God before the creation of the world to send the suffering son. So that's Peter's confession. We should focus on the cross, church. Because it's God's plan before you had existence, before I had existence, 
This is God's plan. Who are we to come into a local church and think we run the show? No, God's plan runs the show, which is the cross. Word. Two, if you're taking notes. The Old Testament testimonies. So, real quick, turn to Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Again, this is a systematic study, which means I'm going to take you to different verses in the scriptures to prove the point. And the point is this. The cross is God's eternal plan. Amen. Amen. And you're going to learn your Bibles through this process. At least some of the books in the Bible. Let me take another sip of water. Read those verses to yourself. Read them. Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. Just read those verses to yourself real quick. So let, listen to this. God promises Satan the cross. Amen. So the context, you know it in Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve haven't listened to God. God told them not to mess with the tree of, not, of the knowledge of good and evil. Yet they disobeyed God. And then God comes on the scenes and confronts Satan, Adam and Eve. And here we're going to see some of the words he says to Satan. So listen to the promise he makes to Satan about the cross. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Satan, because you have done this, you've made my image barriers rebel against my voice. You're the cause. You are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On the belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. Listen to verse 15. Here's the key. And I will put intimate enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. In most translations, that second word seed is capitalized. Listen to what he says about that capitalized seed, which we would argue is Jesus. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. In other words, there's a coming Messiah coming to crush the works of the enemy. And listen, so you've got to ask yourself, what are the works of the enemy? Well, the context is the enemy causes us to reject the word of God. In other words, he causes humanity to live in conflict to God and toward each other. And he says to Satan, Satan, my son is coming to destroy your works of causing humanity not to listen to a loving creator. And so the question I ask is this, did any New Testament writer point you back to Genesis chapter 3? And I would say yes. Turn to 1 John real quick. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. 1 John, and keep your, keep your place in Genesis we're going back to Genesis here in a little bit. But go to 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Listen to what John says. He confirms what we just read in Genesis. Listen to this. When you're there, say word. 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 When you're there, type word. Listen to what John says. He who's he who sins is of the devil. Meaning, if you have this lifestyle of sin and you could care less about living for God, Satan is still your father. Ouch. If there's no remorse, no repentance in your life, Satan is still your father. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. He points you back to the creation story. Listen to this. For this purpose, the son it was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Listen, the cross, y'all listen to this, is about you coming to Jesus as Messiah, as Lord, so the devil's works can be crushed in your life and so that you can live for the glory of Jesus. We have to refocus on this church. We have to refocus that the cross is meant to destroy the satanic works of the devil in your life and in my life. We have to refocus. We have to 
primary focus that Jesus Christ laid down his life so that the works of the devil could be destroyed in our lives. Refocus. The believer is not meant to live a lifestyle of sin no more. The believer is not meant to live in gossip no more, division no more, no more. Everybody say no. No. More. more. If Christ is your Messiah, you must die to the devil's works in your lives. I must die to the devil's works in my life. We have to refocus that the cross is meant to magnify Jesus and crush the works of sin in our lives. B. Everybody say B. B. Like the letter B, not the B-E, like B something, right? B. God promises Abraham the cross. So go to Genesis, back to Genesis chapter 22. You should know where the book of Genesis is by now. <laughs> Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 through 18. God promises Abraham the cross. Then, it, then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the, the gate of their enemies. Listen to this word. In your seed, all the nations of earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. If you're going to do research on these verses, if you go read Paul's letter, specifically Romans, Paul shows you that this verse is based on Jesus. Right? God says, I'm a, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. In other words, in Christ, when all nations specifically people in the different nations all around the world, past, present, and future, whenever they place their faith in Christ, they are blessed. Amen? Amen? Because when they place their faith in Christ, they are forgiven for all of their sins. But Jesus had to go to the cross in order for this to take place. Amen? In other words, you and I are blessed if we come to the Messiah. But this is something that God promises Hundreds and thousands and all of eternity before it happened. Amen. You see, Abraham didn't pop on the scenes and say, oh, I got a great plan. No, Abraham was part of God's eternal plan. Peter already told you that. In other words, church, God's plan is the same. It's the cross. All nations shall be blessed that put their faith in Jesus. Listen to this, church. When's the last time you had another nation on your mind for the sake of the gospel? Because right? the gospel is not just for America. Amen. The gospel is for all nations. He tells you that in Genesis. He tells you that throughout the scriptures. He tells you that in the book of Acts. He tells you that in the book of Revelation when it says all nations will be serving King Jesus. Why? Because in Christ the nations shall be blessed with salvation. We have to refocus, church. Amen. All right, distractions, you get caught up in the, the, the sins of so-called brothers and sisters, and it just hinders you from being on mission. Or listen to this, you're so caught up with your transformation that you don't keep your eyes on the cross and you got distracted. Listen, return back to the eternal plan of God, which is salvation in Christ. But the cross had to take place. Amen. We're going to talk about that next week. Listen to this. Everybody say C. Or C. Type C. God promises the prophets the cross. So go back to Isaiah 53. Hopefully you know where Isaiah 53 is now. Turn back to Isaiah 53. I'm going to get some more water. And when you're there, say word or type word. 
And at the same time, put your finger at 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 24 and 25. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 24 and 25. Put your finger there. And at Isaiah 53. Word. If you're there, say word. Word. If you're not there yet, you need to learn your Bible. The books of the Bible, right? I'm just joking. I, there's some books I had no clue where they're at. So Isaiah, Isaiah 53. Specifically, I'm going to read verses 5 and 6 again. But he, talking about the coming Messiah, Jesus, was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. Aren't you glad that he gives you peace? Peace. Yes. Amen. He gives you unity with him. Amen. And if you follow his instructions, he'll give you unity with each other. That's right. And by his stripes we are healed. Listen to this, verse 6. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And because of your rejection of God's voice, this is what he does for you. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. Amen. Isn't he a good God? Good. Good. Isn't he good? All right, so keep that verse in your mind and go to 1 Peter. If you're there, type word. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 24 and 25. So keep those uh, verses in Isaiah in your mind, right, that he was led to the slaughter. Right? That, that we can return to him. Right? Listen to this. 24, 25. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, and in the cross, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Doesn't that sound like Isaiah? Yep. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer to your souls. So in other words, listen to this. Just like Peter had to remind his brothers and sisters, return to the cross, refocus on the cross. Brothers and sisters, we have to refocus on the cross. Amen. We were all going to the slaughter of hell. Amen. We were all blinded, dead in our trespasses on this side of eternity, and this Messiah was wounded Spit on, poured out his blood for us. Can't we refocus on the cross? Amen. Amen. We have gotten so not just at peace. If you this is this isn't just a peace problem. This is a national issue that churches don't focus on the cross like the first century church did. The first century church were so consumed with Jesus. Did they address sin issues? Absolutely. But that did not consume their hearts. What consumed their hearts was the living Messiah laid down his life, fulfilled the Old Testament prophecy for his glory and for our good. Why wouldn't we refocus on the cross and get excited again but with what King Jesus has done for us, church. This is God's pre-eternal plan. He gave Abraham insight. You go read the life of Moses. He gave Moses insight. You go read the life of David. He gave David insight on a future Messiah that will rule forever. The plan of God is the same. The cross, salvation in Christ. Everybody say three. Three. Three is this. Let's look at Jesus Christ's testimony. Shouldn't we look at his testimony? Shouldn't we look at what he said during his time on this planet? As the God man. Listen, as Jesus says this in Luke chapter 9, verse 22. The Son of Man must suffer many things. And be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribe, and be killed and raised the third day. Listen, church. If you are in Christ, you rejecting his voice 
should not be a habitual thing that you do. He has redeemed you so that you can return to the great shepherd of your soul, the Messiah that was planning to come before the creation of the world. It's time for us to refocus and to relearn the cross. Because sometimes we just got to relearn some stuff. Sometimes we forget why we exist as a local church. And trust me, we aren't the only ones that battle with this. You go read the Gospels, the disciples got so distracted constantly and Jesus continued to say things like this. Right? They wanted an earthly Messiah, someone that would come and overthrow Rome. Jesus says, no, boys, I've come to redeem your souls. Which is most important, by the way. Because I'm going to go ahead and tell you, all nations, mark my word, if Jesus tarries, falls down. But his kingdom is forever. And Jesus is trying to get them to understand this, that his role in his first coming was to go to a cross, to suffer and to die, and on the third day, rise. Church, we must refocus. We have to refocus on the cross. The Lord's Supper, if you take a notes or you have the notes, Luke chapter 22 verses 14 through 23. I'm not going to read those verses. You can do that with your homework. But listen to this. Jesus Christ is preparing the disciples for his coming and his coming suffering and death. In other words, through the ministry of Jesus, he is trying to get his disciples and he is trying to get us to understand that we need to focus on the cross. You see, because God does something supernaturally whenever we get our minds on the cross. He brings refreshment, He brings renewal, and He brings mission, and hopefully He helps you to die to your sin. Amen. <laughs> Listen to this. To study the New Testament and the Old Testament and miss God's plan of the cross is to read the Scriptures wrong. If you miss that, that God's eternal plan is a Messiah, the Son of God, you haven't read your Bible correctly. And if that's not the mission, the cross that consumes your soul and consumes a church, we are missing the point of the Bible. The Bible is one book about a Messiah suffering and dying for wicked human beings like you and me. And throughout the ministry of Jesus, he is pointing his disciples to that plan. May we refocus on the cross. We need to be aware that the cross is God's eternal plan. God is in complete and total control, church. Amen. I read, as I read the book of Revelation, God's plan is successful. Amen. It may seem like America's not being successful and even the world's not being successful right now. But I guarantee you, my God is being successful right now. <coughs> I mean, I just heard this past week of somebody getting saved. Amen? Amen? In this area. Like, God is still redeeming people, church. God is still sitting on his throne. And because of the coronavirus, that doesn't mess up the plan <coughs> of God, which is the cross. But study history. Be educated. Like there has been sickness after sickness throughout history, but God's plan still remains. You see, if you're not careful, listen to this one. I'm not saying you shouldn't be cautious. Carol can tell you I've been very cautious through this sickness. I ain't been at the office that much this week. You need to be cautious, but listen to this. You don't need to be consumed with the sickness. In other words, this sickness doesn't need to consume your mind. What needs to consume our minds is the cross. Okay. You have to stay on mission. The cross needs to be the reality that consumes us as we get through this. And I'll just say this. When we get back here as a gathering, 
I don't know about you, but it's time that we refocus on the cross. It's time that we put the childish behavior behind us. It's time we put the gossip behind us. If we are saved in Christ, it's time that we get the mess out of here and that we become the holy people of God, consumed with God's mission, the cross. Amen. It's time, church. It's time. And I know this is a scary plan. Listen to this. God, get anyone out the way that doesn't want to focus on the cross and get us that want to focus on the cross consumed with the cross and on mission for your glory. It's time, church, that we move forward from the childish ways and move forward with the cross. Amen. This plan should lead us to do many things as the redeemed people of God have listed for us. Read and understand the scriptures. The scriptures are about the cross. Amen. Now, things going on between that, absolutely. Dealing with real, real people in real time and space. But God is orchestrating the cross behind the scenes. Amen. To submit to this all knowing Lord, to his all knowing Lordship. He knows everything. Like he knows about this virus. He knows past, present, future, history. You go read the book of Revelation. He's successful. Submit to him. Not Pastor Steve, to the Lord. Three, be confident that our Lord is in control of all human history. Four, let's praise him and worship this great God. And praising isn't just singing. It's the way you talk to your family. It's the way you talk to your coworkers. Does it point them to this great Messiah? Amen? Amen? Praise is the way you live life for the glory of God. Praise and worship Him, church. Refocus on the cross. Amen. So I hope you're looking forward to this series. What I did is just give you some groundwork. Uh, next week we're going to look at the actual event that surrounded the cross. Amen? Amen. So I pray that uh, God has spoke to you like he has me through my study. Uh, we're going to sing a song, and then I'll come back up here and pray us out. God bless you.